Hello everyone, my name is Jim Garrity. Welcome to part two of this series of videos detailing the design and build of John's guitar shelf. At the end of part one, the alcloves that hold the body of the guitars were complete and they were fixed to the wall and the ceiling in John's room. In this video, we decide how we're going to support the necks of the guitars and build the retaining straps to prevent the instruments falling out of the alcoves. We have lots to cover, so we best be getting on with it. With the alcoves finished, we can now start thinking about how to hold the guitar neck up. This is John's acoustic guitar, and uh, as you see it fits into the alcove quite nicely. Next thing we need to do is make a former strap here to hold it up. If I let go of this it will fall forward and then come out of the, uh, of the alcove, which is no good. Now I know where the ceiling joists are, there's one here and there should be another one here, 400 millimetres up from the first one. Uh, that's the centres of the ceiling choice in this house. I haven't actually dug a hole through yet, so I'm proven it's there, but it should be. So between those two points, I should be able to fit something in here with a strop that comes down and clips on. At least that's the idea. And uh, that's what uh, the next job is. I now need to hold the necks of the guitar up to the ceiling. I was looking at blocks which are going to hold the strops, which would be the soft rope that comes around to hold the, the necks of the, uh, the guitar up. Uh, but I've got to put them in different places and it's between the ceiling joists. Now I did think about putting separate pieces of wood along so uh, for each alcove, but then I thought, well, if I just put one large sheet, and that's what this is, on the ceiling, this is 900 by 600 millimetres, uh, it's going to be screwed uh, to the ceiling in six positions and these in, are in line with the ceiling joists. So that will go into the ceiling and then that gives me a nice large area where I can screw bits of wood on to hold the strops to hold the necks of the guitar. The first guitar is in place, it's the six string acoustic, the body is pushed into the alcove, the neck as you see is held up by that strop. Now the strop is actually macrame, it's something which I tied together uh, the other day, uh, there are two eyes at the top here. The macrame strop starts on that strop there. It's actually tied onto there, comes around, and it's tied onto a, a carabiner on here, which clips into the, the second eye. More about that later. Now the board itself and that little subplate, I think all this is going to be uh, primed and then painted white and that will then disappear into the uh, into the ceiling and there'll just be the strops, which the multicoloured strops uh, hanging there. So that's the first one in position. I've now got four more to put up there. This is the cord that I'm using for holding the neck of the guitar up against the ceiling. There's only four items uh, in this cord. The cord itself in the centre is actually four colours of the same type of cord. I bought that from uh, the local hardware shop and uh, it's four millimetre in diameter cord. Uh, I bought a whole heap of it because I wanted to make five off and they're such uh, nice colours I thought well some left over I should be able to use for something else. Uh, so that's the the cord. Uh, at this end we have an eye. Again that was bought at the local hardware shop. They come in packs of four, well, they do in the UK anyway, and it's just a, a screw eye for going into, into wood. Uh, the diameter of the, of the eye is 25 millimetres with the wood screw thread at this end. The other end we have a carabiner, and uh, this is just a clip carabiner here. Again that was at the bought at the local hardware shop, they come as ones and one pound 10p, so that shouldn't uh, shouldn't break the bank. Uh, the last item that we need is something to do a, a whip. Now I happen to have some lacing cord uh, on my on my bench in the workshop, so I, I use that, but any thin cord or, uh, or, th or th thin cord or string should do, and that will hold it all together. So the four cords start off one metre long, that's one metre long each, and once they're all macrame together it gives a strop from end to end of just the uh, just the cord itself of 250 millimetres roundabout. It doesn't have to be the, that exact. Once the strop is finished it needs to be attached to the ceiling. Uh, this goes on to a little sub plate which I've made here. This is just 60 millimetres by 
130. Uh, you can see we have two securing screws that will hold this plate to the wood in the on the ceiling, the 17 millimeter plywood up there. There are two holes uh, drilled here for the thread on the 25 millimeter loops uh, eyes here. One I've screwed in, the other one will be the eye that's at the end of the strop. This will screw into, into here, screw it down all the way. I'll put a screwdriver through that as you use it as a lever and then tighten it up. And then once it's up the, in the ceiling, ta-da, that's all there is to it. Now, how I made this, I will be showing you in just a moment. Now this cord I've cut off to one meter long. So each of these lengths are cord are one meter long. The cord is made out of plastic and the plastic is very fine fiber. So you find when you cut it, it frays back very easily and very quickly. So to avoid that, if you get an open flame, put this in the flame. In fact, you may want to put gloves on when you do this. So in the flame, straight out, wind it. And then what happens is the fibers being very thin, they melt and they stick together. And now we've got a hard end on here that won't fray back. So I've I've prepared both ends of the cords like that. Now, we need to uh, start the strop off around the carabiner. And to do this, I need the uh, the cords in bunches of two. Now, the uh, the cords are going to be held to each other by using a, a whip. Now, a whip is just a piece of thin cord like this, which is wrapped around the two you want held together. What you need is a loop of the actual material you're using for the whip. Now that's what I have here. This is a piece of lacing cord and uh, I've cut it off, tied a knot at one end, which gives me the loop. Now, the way you do the whip, you think to yourself, how long is the whip going to be? And our whip is going to be about five millimeters long and I need a piece of the cord sticking out at this end. So I'm going to start it round about there where the edge of my thumbnail is. Now the first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to put the loop in. The end of the whip now goes here and you need to get the whip over the top of it. So you see I've put it underneath. Now this takes a little bit of practice. So that goes underneath. The whip itself comes on the top. Now what I have here is waxed lacing cord, which is slippery. So it makes things a little bit difficult. But I think I've managed it there, so I'm just pulling it tight. So we have the whip there. We have the end of the whip just here. The whip itself has come across, which now locks that end in. The loop is in place on the other side and the knot is just here. So we know that when we get to the end of this whip and put this end of the material that's causing the whip through there, we'll be able to pull it through. So now that's three. I'm going to pull the end again just to make sure it's tight, which it is. So that gives us a nice tight whip here. So three, four, eight, nine. Right. and 10. So there will be 10 whips. I now hold it tight with my thumb and finger. There's the loop. There's the end that we started with. We cut the lacing cord. Keeping the pressure on here, it will unwind. Put the end that we've just cut off through the loop, but don't pull it tight because you're going to pull that loop through the whip and you need sufficient room on both sides or sufficient length of the lacing cord to go through. Now, as I pull it, you see it's getting closer and closer. I'm now pulling hard and it's come through. There's the loose end. So if I pull that, that goes through. Pull these together. So this is both ends of the whip. Like that. And there you have it. There's a whip with its two ends and these cords are now held together. Next thing to do is just snip the ends off the whip. Now we won't see this whip when the uh, strop is finished because it's going to be inside the, uh, the strop. But that's it. That's a whip. I will now do the other one off camera because I don't... This is how we're going to start the strop. We have our two pairs of cords. We take one of the 
pairs. Yellow goes through one way, blue goes through the other, like that. So when we pull it tight, we end up with the pair like that. So we have one of the colours coming one way, one coming the other, and they both go around half a turn. The other one we're going to put next to it. So we end up with... So the red cord goes around to there, the green cord around to here, and the same with the yellow and the blue. Now, these two are the ends that we've whipped together and they're sticking up in the air away from the carabiner. We're going to start the knot by taking one of the colours across the next one, this one across the next one, that one across this one, and the last one, which is this red cord, we get the end and pass it through the loop the blue cord. Now that comes together like this. And we want to get it tight, but around the, the two whips that we made before. And now go around them one at a time, just to make sure you end up with a nice square knot. So the, like that. And then when they're all the same as they are now, we can do the next knot. And it's the same as before. The green it now comes back on itself. So it's got to make a loop around like this, so the comes back on itself. The yellow one comes back on itself. The blue one back on itself. The red one back on itself. Find the end and put that through the loop of the green cord where we started. So that's the second that's the second knot. Now you can see that the, the cord has come back on itself. So it's made this loop on each of the sides the blue and then the red and we carry on doing that now we're right at the top of the two cords that were whipped together and you can see that the knot makes what looks like the top of a crown hence the name this is a crown knot and we keep doing now we keep going now the next knot will be tighter and slightly smaller because all these knots are holding those two whipped uh, cords in position. I've got another one here which I have started as well. The first few knots go around the cords that are whipped together. This is the first knot that's on top of the, the ends of the cords. And as you can see, they come together quite nicely. And we will carry on. Now, the next thing I need to do is connect these four cords here to the eye here. Now, the way that I've been doing this, and there's probably different ways that you can, but I take two of the cords, which are opposite each, each other. In this case, I take the red and the yellow because they will be easier to see. Push the red cord through in this direction, the yellow in that direction. Now, what we need to do is bring these together like this. And now the red and the yellow have got to be whipped together just there. Because what's going to happen is the red and the yellow will get whipped together here, the other side of the, the eye, so they come around and then get whipped. Once they're whipped together, we cut them off and then do the same with the blue and the green. Now it is a bit fiddly, but we end up with two whips inside here. Now you can't actually whip inside, or you can, but it's very difficult. So what I tend to do is work out how much length we need, which is about that which uh, comes into about an inch, 25 millimetres. That's between the top of the loop of the eyelet 
and the top knot here. So that gives a, an inch there, that's the space we want. And now I pull the red through, hold it together there. So you can see that that's the right position, so we want it whipped there. Now holding it tight together, you can turn it round like this, if you're right-handed, if you're left-handed it'd be the other way. And now we can put a loop, or sorry, a whip along here and, and through. I can now grab hold of this end, pull, grab hold of the other end and pull, like that. So we've got the whip in place. And now snip the ends off. One, two, pull this up and you see that there's the red and the yellow cords whipped together in the centre. Now you see that the the later, uh, sorry, the um, whip is just there, so I'm now going to cut these off just below where the whip is, like that. And you see how it sits nicely in that hole. Right now the next thing to do is the same operation on the green and the blue wires. Keeping them in the same place, pull them out sideways and that is where I want the whip. You see it's now around the other way and I've got lots of room to do the whip. As you can see the two whips are now finished and they're tucked inside the four cores that come over. If I bring this up you can see it's nice and neat in there. Right so there's one more operation to do and that is one more whip which is going to go over here. You know how I'm going to do the whip. The strop is now finished, as you can see here. It is now screwed into the subplate and the other eye is in place as well. So it's ready to go up onto the ceiling. The shelf is complete. As you can see there are now four guitars up there all hanging from their strops. We have one spare just here expansion later on. The 17mm plywood that's on the ceiling has got to all come down that is, this happened next week and we take the corners off of the router, paint it all white and then stick it all back on the ceiling again. So it's now a functional shelf but uh, it will be a functional shelf and white within a week. John has been using the shelf now for a couple of weeks wanted to keep this on the ceiling just to make sure everything was all right, which it is, and now it's time to run a router around the edges, just take the corners off and also on the blocks which are, which are here, and then the whole lot's going to be sanded down and painted white. I'm going to be using uh, emulsion, so you can use the emulsion as the undercoat and then go straight over the top with, uh, with more emulsion. More emulsion, not no motion. <laughs> the routing's all done now. The small uh, blocks rounded quite nicely. We've got a nice radius all the way around. Just need to sand these back. Using my Merca hand sander, I sand the edges of the ceiling plate first and then its faces. The support blocks are next and then I inspect the surfaces before painting. All the sanding is now finished, but as you can see there's a little gap there where a piece of wood has gone missing. Uh, I've checked all around the outside of the, uh, the plywoods on here and also on the blocks because the uh, the laminations have faults in and they're just uh, sometimes not patched up so you can have voids in there. In fact in this piece here you can see that there is a, a hole just there. So I've got hold of my wood filler, I've celebrated the fact by getting a brand new pair of gloves on and now I'm going to fill the holes and once they're filled and dried the, um, the tube that I'm using here uh, on the instructions it says that it dries in uh, in two hours. The temperature in the room is 20 degrees so this should hopefully dry in that time. Now I can sand it back and then start with the painting. The filler is now dry. It's actually well and truly dry because it's now the next day. I didn't get back to it yesterday 
So the next job is to knock this uh, filler back with the uh, with the sander and then uh, start the painting. And that's what I'm about to do. So we have the sander. We have some sap and we start sanding. With all the surfaces sanded, vacuumed and wiped with the tack cloth, it's time to start painting. There's not much area to paint, so I'm using the small roller. Once the ceiling plate is finished, I get to work on the small support blocks. I use three coats of paint in the end to, uh, to paint all the blocks and the, uh, the large sheet that goes on the ceiling. And now it's getting quite interesting, we're getting towards the end of this project. I have the, uh, the struts here and also the eyelets to screw into these blocks and then screw the blocks onto this wood and then this piece of wood up into the ceiling in John's room. Ooh. The sheet is now fully assembled and ready to go on the ceiling. We have our five strops in place. I have a spare block here to go on later when uh, John gets a, another guitar. And now it's time to screw this on the ceiling and then call it a day. And we are done. John's guitar shelf and alcoves are all finished off. Just waiting to be populated now with guitars. And that's it. John's guitar shelf is finished. The alcoves are populated, except for the end one waiting for the next guitar. And this area here is for expansion. We may have to get rid of Doctor Who's TARDIS and perhaps put the jet engine somewhere but we can get a few more guitars in there if he wants to. John tells me the shelf has been working very well. The clips are nice and easy to use and the fifth alcove has been filled already. The latest guitar is from the 1960s. It was a wreck when John first got hold of it, but he's reconditioned it and rebuilt it for his final year project at college. He's made a really good job of it and he now has an instrument with an authentic classic sound. And with that, this video and the guitar shelf build is at an end. Take care everyone, I'll see you next time. Could you do something like this? Of course you can.